Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We're talking about Moses of the burning bush today. And more about Moses. Some of you may have seen the old, old movie of the Ten Commandments. You remember Charlton Heston was in it. But one of the pieces of the story, of course, is about his mother and how she saves him. So we'll hear a long reading that kind of gives us a context for Moses. So I invite you to stand, though, as we begin by singing our opening song, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. about the story from Moses, you may remember that Moses was asked to remove his shoes because he was standing on holy ground. So maybe we could introduce ourselves to one another. And has there been a place that really felt like you were standing on holy ground when you got there? Let's introduce ourselves and say hello.
If you can see me, raise your hand. Thank you. Let us continue our worship with our call to worship. Sometimes we feel like asking God, are you paying attention? And God asks us too, are we paying attention? To the people right in front of us, to the people who live far away, to the opportunities presented to us, are we paying attention? God sees, God knows, and God comes through us to respond. We listen and look and go. Let us pray. You are, you will be. You are being itself, always on the move. We cannot understand you with our minds, but we know your presence, your being. We know your story with us and with our ancestors. We have seen you at work throughout history and your action anchors us in your goodness. This is your name for all generations, the God who is in relationship. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated as we hear our reading from Exodus. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than you. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase and, in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Chisholm and Ramses' for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she, she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yes, so the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because, she said, I drew him out of the water. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, 
the priest of Midian, he led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up to that land, to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jeb Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt... You shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Ms. Moses, I am who I am. He said to further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. I'm going to invite the children to come forward, and Jacob has a message today. All right, that's right. You can stay in the pew if you want. All righty. So today we are talking about Moses and the burning bush. Now, and I'll pose this question to all the congregation, and this children's message can be for everyone. What is something that you guys are afraid of? You can raise your hand and shout it out. Snakes. Snakes are pretty scary. You back there? Spiders, also pretty scary. Uh, my girlfriend always asks me to kill the spider uh, whenever she finds one in the house, even though I'm just as scared as them. Heights. Heights, ooh, yes. All right, so if you want to go to the next one, has anyone ever been cliff diving before? If I asked any of you guys to go cliff diving, would you say yeah, or would you be too scared to go? Too scared? Yeah, it's... It's some, pretty, it's some pretty scary stuff. I've done it, but uh, I was pretty scared the first time. All right. What about if I asked you guys to go into a haunted house alone? Would you do that? No? Oh, you would? Brave soul. I'm, I'm the type I always have to go with friends. <laughs> uh, and then let's say you, you ran out of honey for your tea or your peanut butter and honey sandwich. I don't know. Would you, would you go out to the bee's nest in the backyard to maybe harvest some honey from the hive? No? Yeah, don't, don't want to do that. That's too scary. So these are all things that, these are all pretty scary things that we don't want to deal with alone or maybe even, I don't even think I'd go disturb a bee's nest with friends, honestly. Uh, and yet Moses, when he found this burning bush and he was talking to God, God asked him to go back and free his people. And that's pretty scary because the Pharaoh is not someone you want to mess with. And talking to God, Moses didn't suddenly become not afraid. Moses was still afraid to go back, but he knew that God was with him. He knew that God was there 
watching his back and would provide for him. So God is there for us doing the same thing, even when we do those scary things like dealing with snakes or spiders or haunted houses or heights or all those things, or even other things. God is always with us, providing for us and caring for us. Uh, please pray with me. Hey, God. I pray that you help us to remember that it's okay to be afraid, that the world can be a scary place sometimes. Uh, I just pray that you remind us that you're also there with us, that you're there holding our hand and patting us on the back and letting us know that you're there with us, you're watching over us, and you're providing for us every and any way you can. In your name we pray, amen. All right, uh, now it is time for Sunday school. If the kids want to go to that, you're also welcome to stay. So our gospel reading is from the gospel of Mark. Jesus said, and as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses and the story about the bush how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is God not of the dead, but of the living. Now, I know that Wikipedia is usually not the best resource for trying to come up with some facts, uh, but... If you happen to look at Wikipedia under the entry for Moses, here are some of the things that you would read. You'll see some of the things might say that he is one of the greatest prophets in Christianity, in Islam, and the greatest prophet in Judaism. You'd also see that for many Jews, it's thought that Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, the Torah. You'll also see that Moses is known as the liberator. And he's known as the lawgiver. Remember the story of receiving from Mount Sinai and then handing it to the people, the Ten Commandments. There's also some historical references after to, about Moses. The first governor of the Plymouth Colony was John Carver, and he was known as the Moses of the Pilgrims. In 1799, when George Washington died, two-thirds of his eulogies said that he was America's Moses. And of course, Harriet Tubman, who led slaves to freedom, was known the Moses of her people. So Moses was kind of a big deal right? Moses is an important name for all of us to know. But you know what? There would not have been a Moses if there hadn't been Shifra and Pua. If it hadn't been Shifra and Pua who disobeyed Pharaoh's order to kill the newborn sons. There would not have been a Moses without a mother who saw no option but to put her infant son in a basket and let him float down the Nile River. Can you imagine that day that she decided that was her only choice? The day when she decided that the risk of him staying home was greater than the risk of drowning in the Nile River. There would have been no Moses without a sister who watched from afar and saw that basket and suggested that maybe a Hebrew woman might nurse this child. And it turned out to be Moses' own mother who nursed him. There would have been no Moses without a Pharaoh's daughter who saw this basket in the river and then took the baby out and decided to raise it in her own household. There would have been no Moses without these five women, Shifra, Puwa, Miriam, Moses' sister, Pharaoh's daughter, and his mother. Now, sometimes it's true, I wish they'd done more, especially Pharaoh's daughter. Why didn't she speak to her father about all the other children? 
but also sometimes I wish I'd done more. I wish I'd done more after the flooding in Libya, which have left over 15,000 people died. I wish I'd done more after the fires in Maui with so many homes destroyed. I wish I'd done more after Friday there was a, a killing in Pakistan at a religious gathering and 50 people were died, had been killed. Sometimes the world's problems seem so big and I feel very small. Where I find the inspiration in this passage though, this book of Exodus tells about five women, Shifra, Pua, Miriam, his sister, Pharaoh's daughters. The world was seen like there was so much, the problems were so big. Pharaoh they, and had said that all the children should be killed, the boys. Their grief and anger is so intense, the horror of it all is so great. And the five women didn't respond by trying to help all of the children, but they did help one. They helped the one in front of them. I think that's our message for this morning, to help the one in front of us. Maybe it's enough to help just one. In that case, that became Moses, who lived and grew and came to save thousands of people. So our message today is to look for, pay attention, watch for, notice the one. And it makes it all a lot more possible, I think. There's this organization that's called HOPE in capital letters. Help one person every day. HOPE. They share some stories on their website, examples of how we might help just one person. They say, take an example of Henny. Penny is a woman that is right in front of you at the cash register. And you see her giving her groceries to the cashier who is logging them in it, but Henny is watching the total add up. And when she gets to the end, Penny takes some items out of her cart. Well, Hope says, maybe you noticed Penny, and she doesn't have to take items out of her cart. We may not be able to feed everyone in the world that's hungry, but we could help Henny help one person every day. Another story they share is about Jake. And Jake is, has a sign, he's at one of the stop signs in town, and the sign says he's asking for help and says that he's a disabled vet. And you're wondering, well, I don't know if that's a true story or not. You can't help every disabled vet, so maybe we can help one, help Jake, help one person every day. And then there's the story of Emily, and maybe you drove by her house, you knew her from years ago, but you haven't seen her recently, so you would give her a phone call. You can't help every lonely senior citizen, but maybe you could call one help one person every day. But of course, in order to help someone, we have to pay attention. We have to notice them. We have to be watching for them. Because Shifra and Pua and Miriam and his mother and Pharaoh's daughter helped one person, Moses survives infancy. He grows up later in Pharaoh's household. He gets married. He works with his father-in-law Jethro, keeping his flocks. One day he takes his flocks out to Horeb and he sees a bush. The bush is burning, but it's not consumed. Now this was a new revelation to me this year as I read this story. In order to realize that that bush is not consumed, he had to stand there for a bit, right? He had to be attentive to the bush. He had to wait for it, watch for it, look at it for a period of time. Maybe there were other shepherds in that area who had gone by this burning bush, didn't pay much attention because they didn't see the miracle in it. 
They hadn't waited and watched and noticed. So Moses stops. He stops at the bush. And God says, wait. Don't come any closer because this is holy ground. Take off your shoes before you walk on this holy ground. And so Moses does what God says, and then God says something truly miraculous. He says, I have heard the misery of my people. I know their suffering. I have come to deliver them. Great, thanks Moses. And then God continues, and you're the man. (laughs) You're the answer to their prayers. We're the answer to someone's prayers today. Have you noticed them? Have you paid attention? There's a bush burning somewhere in front of us. Go and bring hope. Help one person every day. Just one. Who knows it might be another Moses. Amen. I invite you to stand as together we sing. our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father (coughs) Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We call on you, loving and gracious God. We come to you with worries, God, for there are times when the world feels dangerous and we aren't sure how to solve the problems in front of us. For people who are angry and afraid, we ask for your help, trusting that you will persevere until a new day dawns and peace prevails. Lord, in your mercy, blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, for you pay attention to this world you have made. In the beginning, you had your hands in the dirt and your breath in our faces, and it was good. In every time and place, you have been faithful to your people, leading Abraham and Sarah in the wilderness, keeping watch over Hagar in the desert, feeding your people through the ingenuity of Joseph, saving them through the hands of Shifra and Puah. In every generation, you are at work, revealing your care and your presence through the action of your faithful people. We give you thanks, O God. We turn our eyes to those you call us to see today, to families facing choices we do not want to imagine, to women who work behind the scenes for abundant life and secretly find ways to stand against injustice in defiance of expectations. Without them, there would have been no Moses, and without them today, there will be no future for your people. We give you thanks, O God. We turn our eyes to those places where the everyday things we take for granted are an unimaginable dream, where the neighbors you call us to love are yet hungry and ignored. Do not let us forget them when we leave this place, for you came among us word made flesh to get as close as humanly possible, and nothing escapes your attention. We give you thanks, O oh God. As we bring our thanks and praise, send your Holy Spirit to those in special need of healing, especially for Sarah, Paul, Chris and Amy Kearney and family, Joan, Jonathan, Roland, John, Ed, Andrew and his parents, Lane and Drew, <coughs> Rohrer family, Ken, Phil and James. No one escapes your attention. We give you thanks, O oh God. We bring before you today these concerns and celebrations. We pray for Bill Hartzell's sister, Sherry, as she undergoes treatment, and pray for healing as she goes through the process. We pray for other persons and concerns we name either aloud at this time or silently in our hearts. We ask these and all things in the name of the one who lives good news among us, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You may be seated as we receive an offering now. Mark, would you pass the offering plates as we sing our gift of offering as well?
please stand as you're able. You are the giver of abundant life, O oh God. And yet we so often choose that which is not life-giving. We confess the things that we have done and the things that we have failed to do. Forgive us, Lord, for overlooking opportunities to do justice. Forgive us for being so wrapped up in ourselves that we don't notice you calling. As Moses turned aside from his everyday concerns to see you doing a new thing, turn us aside from those things that consume us, that we may be set ablaze by your call that brings life instead. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome to the table for Holy Communion. For those of you at home, folks here may have a seat for those of you at home, please hear these words for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Is there someone that might help me distribute today? Mark, standing up there already. Thank you. We'll go from front to back. You can stand or kneel around the communion table. I will place a wafer into your hand. I also have gluten-free wafer, if that is your preference. And then we have a tray that has red grape juice or white wine. You may take a cup, consume it, and then place it into the empty tray before returning to your seat. All are welcome to the table. Please come.
please stand as you're able. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Carry the blessing of the one who never lets you go, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending song is Great and Mighty is He. I just had a thought I wanted to share with you. The same God that sent the gentle breeze that sent Moses' basket towards Pharaoh's daughter is the same God that sent the huge wind that separated the waters of the Red Sea's wicked cross and who sent the wind of the Holy Spirit. When you ask God to do something, you never know what's going to happen. Just be ready. He is great and mighty. So I hope that you can come back at 3 o'clock and enjoy that. October 28th, we have a food packing event Saturday, October 28th. Be in our fellowship hall in the space of two hours from noon to 2. We will package 10,000 meals. So I know that I said today in my message, serve just one person. Well, you'll be able to serve 10,000 people on October 28th. So hope that you can join us. Are there other announcements for this morning? Cindy. Two weeks from today, we are welcoming Ruth Oakley from Cabinet to come and talk. She's kicking off what we're calling our listening and learning forums. Uh, it's not just listening. It's a chance to also ask questions. It's this afternoon. You're welcoming a safe, reconciling embrace process that we are going through that's emotionally humbling and evoke the end of death spring. good. I know Mark talked about bread and roses last week, but the, the collection box is out in the hallway. Um, we're making a special push for the end of the year. It costs us $200 a month 
to serve a meal, and so we'd like to have opportunity for you to take part in that. Thank yes, you. if you would like to be part of our Motley crew up here any given Sunday, please let me know, um, either in person or my name is on the church website somewhere. Um, we are in need of pretty much everything that come in, if you sing, if you play an instrument, um, let me know and join us. And they're not so Motley looking, I don't think. <laughs> Go in peace. <laughs>